the space of just five years, GT Academy has gone from a gaming experiment to being the world's most innovative driver selection program. Ten bedroom gainers have gone from virtual to reality and now compete as professional motor racing drivers, taking multiple podiums at international race meetings all over the world. Now a new wave of, of academy graduates join previous winners and start the life-changing journey of becoming professional racing drivers. This is GT Next Level. Just four months ago, 24-year-old Miguel Feixa was in his native Portugal, studying to become a mechanical engineer. Now he's just days away from racing in his first international motorsport event. To get here, Miguel competed online over against one million gamers from across Europe, and then at national finals events before being crowned European GT Academy winner 2013. I didn't think this was possible. I never believed it, but uh, I won, and it's amazing. After coming through an intensive mental and physical driver development program to gain the license required to drive at the Dubai 24, this is a race like no other set in the desert. It puts the, to the test the skills of even the most hardened professionals. The pressure is huge and uh, it's very easy to make a mistake. So hopefully there's no rain and no sandstorm like in the last years. The four hour race is always tough. When you have a racing car, you have to manage to bring the car on the, at the end of the race to keep the gearbox on the way, the brakes, everything. It's uh, quite a long time dark. You have to calculate it. Trackside and helping Miguel deal with the rigors of the race is RJN team principal Bob Neville, who'll head up an experienced crew of 25 mechanics and engineers and academy performance director Simon Fitchard who has worked with the likes of David Coulthard and Sergio Perez. Here there is cars that are a lot faster than his and obviously a lot slower, but it's the a number of cars here. It's this 24-hour race here, it's almost like a baptism of fire. It feels very warm. <laughs> In my home it's uh, raining right now and it's an uh, amazing experience. It has a very high building and people are very friendly here. It feels good to be doing my first big race. I think I'm feeling more like a professional driving. Three of Miguel's teammates will be feeling exactly the same. They've come through an identical development program. 29-year-old car rental manager Florian Strauss from Berlin, winner of the German Academy. 20-year-old car salesman Nick McMillan from the North American Academy. And Stanislav Aksenov, the Russian Academy winner. And along with Miguel, they'll be looking to the final team member for advice on how to tackle the 24-hour Dubai. Experienced motor racing professional Lucas the important Donis. thing at the end in these uh, long distance races is just be calm, be patient and, and wait uh, until your, your time because there's no rush, it's 24 hours. Five years ago, Lucas was the first winner of GT Academy and since then his professional career has seen him take podiums at every level he's driven at, including the Le Mans 24 and two podiums in the last two years in Dubai. So he knows exactly what the graduates will be going through ahead of the race. They have uh, so little experience and it's a big, big race for them. You feel the nervous, you feel the pressure they have, but I'm trying to, to convince them that they're doing a good job. But before the race, there's the small matter of qualification to get out of the way, giving everyone a chance to get used to the track, the car and the conditions. The pressure of trying to set a fast lap seems to be getting to Miguel as he overdrives car one, two, three. So Lucas pulls him aside from Sir, for some you. advice. I come from the LMP2 to take this car. Is I, I try to break as late as possible, and, that, and that's the biggest mistake you can do in this car. If you push too much, ABS is working, and in the downhill, even more, even worse, and, and you lose the apex, and then you are late on the road. So step back. 
relax and you know you will feel like it breaking the smoother. I know his feeling. Uh, it happened to me back in 2009, and I was putting too much pressure to me because I wanted a future in motorsport. So. The end of qualification sees Lucas and the graduates finish the session fourth fastest in class, and they'll start 30th on the grid. There's never enough time in 24-hour racing. It's always difficult with driver changes, pit stops, familiarisation. So uh, everyone's doing a good job, but, and that's all we need to do to get a result in this particular race. After a morning team briefing, Miguel gets the chance to take in the atmosphere of his first grid walk I think as I'm Lucas prepares for the nervous, start of the race. Uh, not too much. With Miguel scheduled to drive last, he now has to wait to see if the car makes it as far as his stint. Lucas gets off to a great start, consolidating four but with the two cars ahead of him in class, pitting early on, he soon signs, finds himself in second. The car is a bit oversteering on entry, and I think this dip is, is a bit tricky on the, on the rear. We'll see now, it's just patience and keep going around. Miguel is now a step closer to his first drive in the professional race, but with all the other academy graduates to drive before Miguel, it means his first stint will be at night. And the last time Miguel drove this car at night, a lapse in concentration cost him the race. Miguel's Donington incident was worrying because we had explained to him that there was only 20 minutes of the race left, and we were well ahead. A bad moment, really. Unnecessary. As Miguel gets into the car, the team are up to first place. But will he have learned from his past mistakes? I'm just a little bit nervous. He went off on his own uh, about an hour before he was getting in the car and went into his visualisation of how he wants to approach his stint and keep the consistency. He seems to have made a steady start, but the two-hour stint will really put his focus to the test. I think he's come a long way and he's starting to prove he's learned all his lessons here. I did a very long stint, two hours. I didn't know I was capable of doing so much time in the car. But just when Miguel hands over the car to Lucas for the second stint, the head mechanic, Jeff Forty, notices a problem with the car. However, it's not long before car one, two, three starts to overheat. Okay, water temp, water temp. Nine, six, nine, seven. Okay, box now then, please. Box, box, box. I missed it. I missed a bit. Okay, okay, don't panic. Here you are the temperature. Box as soon as possible, box as soon as possible. It's a tense time, all as Lucas tries to guide the car back to the pits before it overheats and does irreparable damage. Hey Lucas, box now though, please, box now. Lucas uses all of his experience to guide the car back to the pits where Jeff and the RJN pit crew go to work hey, immediately. Obviously you've got to attend to it. Hopefully they can fix it, but we're about to find out. Still first at the moment because we had a big lead, but disappearing fast. Jeff and the boys eventually find the leak, but the car's prospects are not what they were. So they've sealed it. But if it isn't sealed, it's got to come off. It's a, but it's right down the back of the engine. It's you know, it's not a permanent fix. We're hoping it'll be enough to do the race. If not, then we've got to take the point off the back of the engine, which is quite a big job. So that's what we're trying to avoid. Lucas is sent back out as everyone hopes that the fix can get them to the chequered flag. Despite the time in the pits, Lucas rejoins the race in pole as car 123's rivals have also been forced to pit with mechanical problems. The seal fitted to the plug 
seem to be holding out so far. Well, night turns in today. Miguel completes his second stint with car one, two, three, and they're still in a commanding position. Eight o'clock in the morning, and the car is doing uh, really well. Uh, that's rude, no? The guys in car 123 have done an absolute immense job. So now it's just a matter, really, of, of keeping the guys focused. But as the race goes into the final hours, the temperature on the track rises and the car begins to overheat once more, forcing it to pit. The water temperature was uh, coming up from 90 to 98. But well, it seems that the temporary seal has held so far, so it's decided that despite the lead car 123 has over its nearest rivals, Lucas will drive the final stint. He will take all his experience to guide the car home without it overheating. It can happen a lot of things, so I'm not taking it for granted. It's first place for car 123 as they take the chequered flag after 513 tense and grueling laps. It's a dream end to Miguel's first endurance race. Well, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling. I wasn't expecting this. It was a great teamwork. All of us did a good job. All the drivers, all the mechanics did an awesome job. We're really, really happy to, to come back here to Dubai and uh, to reach the, the first step of the podium and, you know, win with the new GT Academy boys is really special. All the hard work from the past three months has paid off and again the GT Academy has proven that bedroom gainers can go on to successfully compete at international level. I need some practice spraying champagne, but hopefully I win some more so I can uh, practice in the podium. <laughs> Miguel won't get too much time to reflect on how far he's come since applying online to enter this life-changing competition. He now becomes a Nismo athlete and for the next 12 months has the chance to race all over the world in search for more podium success, proving that he has what it takes to compete at the top level in motorsport. Nissan Nismo takes the GT Academy to the next level. Performance unleashed.